Okay, so again, welcome to our talk about PageGit, the CMS that we've uh, built at Utheme. And um, the talk is called What's Cool About PageGit? What's, what's cool at all? What does that mean? We are not sure. We'll, we'll see, maybe. But before we start about PageGit, we'll say a few words about ourselves. My name is Florian. I'm one of the developers uh, behind PageGit. Yeah, and I'm Malte. I'm from the PageGit team as well. We are both working at Utheme in Hamburg, but enough about us. Let's talk about PageGit. <laughs> All right. Last night we got crazy with some GIFs that we found online. We hope everything went, goes as smooth as we hope. Um, so what we'll be talking about today, uh, just a brief overview of uh, what PageKit is. And then we'll have a, uh, to show you what it looks like, what it feels like, um, have a quick live demo where we'll build something out of nothing. And then we've, we've highlighted a few um, uh, 10 things um, from PageKit that we want to show you, mostly for um, maybe interested developers. Uh, but um, also for everyone who just wants to see what we've built. Um, and in the end, we'll give you a few pointers if you want to learn more. And the goal of this talk is to show you the CMS that we've built, and we hope that uh, also for you as uh, Joomla fans, um, there will be interesting things in there, maybe also for your own personal uh, projects in the future, just to see how we've approached uh, content management from a, from a fresh start. Um, oops. I'm getting crazy with the clicker here. Okay, so uh, the main two reasons behind building PageKit um, were our motivation to have a simple user interface with easy to use tools for the user, and at the same time start with a fresh and a fresh code base that we can um, create to have a yeah, follow modern standards and um, try to achieve a modular architecture for developers to take out things they don't need and add the things that they need for their particular project. Um, we are quite happy that recently we've celebrated our 1.0 release last month um, and we've already seen a lot of people uh, try out PageKit, give it a try and uh, we see a yeah, kind of an active uh, open source community also develop on GitHub, which is quite cool we think. Um, we don't want to use this talk to um, show every single uh, feature that PageKit comes with, um, but yeah, it's just a list of some things that are in there, and I'm not sure why we've chosen the animation in the background, but that doesn't matter. Um, being an open source project itself, PageKit relies on a lot of open source components as well. Most prominently, it's built on top of um, several Symfony components. You're using uh, Doctrine Debel for um, using both um, SQLite and MySQL, um, and yeah, there are many other uh, popular open source projects that we rely on, which, ha which helped us create a solid <coughs> framework to build PageKit up on, <coughs> um, which is of course uh, good because we have a well-tested code base uh, from these open source components. Um, also, of course, important for security reasons to not build everything from scratch. And now, before we go into the more technical details, we will want to show you a quick live demo where we start with uh, nothing and create a website, hopefully. Good morning. Okay, let's just rearrange stuff. Okay, so we've downloaded the PageKit package and extracted it, and when we open it in the browser, we see the PageKit installer. Um, we'll choose English, I think. <laughs> And yeah, as you can see, by default, PageKit installs with SQLite, but if you prefer, you could also um, choose MySQL, up to you. Um, we'll choose SQLite for now. And just enter a site name and create our admin account. Then magic happens, and it's done. So now we can log into the admin area. And the first thing we see is the dashboard that you can, uh, yeah, we are not in Hamburg, but still <laughs> gives you an overview of whatever you want. You can customize it to um, your personal needs, to yeah, add new widgets um, for your own project needs. Uh, on the top left. Yeah, I noticed that, but oh, it's wrong, okay. Wrong Barcelona? <laughs> yeah. All right. We'll just use our fast, um, imagination to. 
So. No. No. <laughs> yeah, I think the Wi-Fi is a bit sloppy, so it might yeah. not. Maybe turn off the Wi-Fi instead. Anyway, let's continue. Um, on the top left, you see the. Um, Martin needs to take a sip of water. On the top left, uh, you can uh, see the main menu, where we see all areas which are available in the uh, page kit backend. Uh, so it comes with a blog, which you can also <coughs> remove if you don't need it for your project, uh, user management, system settings, and a marketplace, which we'll talk about later. Uh, but first, let's have a quick, lo quick look at what the front end looks like. By default, it comes with, um, with a, a, a simple, <coughs> simple theme to get started and some demo content that the installer um, adds. On the top right, you see that currently we have the static homepage. That's the top left. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, we see we have a static homepage and a blog added to the main menu. And we'll see how that menu structure works now when we go back to the back end. And we have a look at the site area, which is the uh, main area where we manage our content and also our site's structure. On the left, we see all menus which are currently created. Right now, it's only the main menu. And on the right, we see all items in that menu. So it's a static homepage and a blog. And uh, this on the right here is the site tree, which means that we can move around items in a site structure. And to show you how that works, we'll add another page to this menu. And we see that yeah, we have a, our content editor here. Oh, it's not optimized for 640 by 480, I'm afraid. <laughs> Um, and if we scroll down, we can, um, we can enter HTML or enable markdown mode, um, which will give us uh, syntax highlighting in whatever mode we are. So right now it's still in HTML. If we switch to markdown, um, we see that we have a, yeah, you can already see what kind of syntax we are using here. Uh, we can use this editor to go to full screen to have on <laughs> larger screens a live preview. Uh, a side-by-side -side preview of the content and um, the rendered um, content. So let's um, just add an image here. We have a few tools available. Um, an image picker where we can uh, pick an image from the storage. Let's just upload something. And add it to our content. And um, yeah, we see that um, it detects what mode we are in. So in Markdown, <laughs> in Markdown, we uh, have the Markdown tag for the uh, image now. In HTML, would be an image tag. All right, let's save this uh, and leave the leave the editor. And when we close this. We see that, of course, this page has appeared here in our main menu, which we can now move around uh, via drag and drop. And we could also nest it as a, I don't know, as a sub item of, of the home page. So let's check out how this looks in the front end. And yeah, this is the page we've created. And on the top, if we hover the home, button, we see that the submenu appears. <coughs> so the site tree defines both the content of the page, but also the page um, structure and also the URL structure. So let's just show one more thing. Um, in PageKit, uh, we have widgets, which um, I guess you might know as modules, um, very similar concept. The theme defines positions where we can publish content in. On the left here, we saw, see all um, widget positions. So for example, the hero position has one widget, um, which is currently, if you open it, again, we see a content editor. We can change some content, of course. And on the top of the editor, um, you see there are several tabs available. For example, the theme can hook in here to add options to a widget. And there's also a visibility tab, which we now use to make this widget visible on our new page. Okay, we save this, go back to the front end, and see that the widget is now visible on this page. Yes. 
Um, still looks quite boring. So one more thing that you can do in the side tree is that each um, each page that we see here, or a node in this tree, can also have some meta options that can be added, for example, from the theme. So here the theme has um, added a tab to this content editor, and here we have an image picker available, um, which uh, can configure, in, in this example for this theme, um, another image for this hero position. So um, we'll upload another image for this. Pick it, save, and head again to the front end. And of course, it now appears in the hero position. So, um, this is kind of um, <laughs> you know, morning again. <laughs> um, this is um, what you've seen is um, yeah, the image picker was added by the theme to the PageKit core interface. This is something that the site tree allows. All right, so that concludes our live demo and we'll reconfigure our screens and go back to the slides. All right, and uh, now as uh, <coughs> in the beginning, we'll highlight um, 10 things that um, how we've approached certain problems and how we've yeah, just done that. <laughs> and for that, I'll hand over to Martin. Yeah, thank you. Um, the first thing we want to highlight today is PageKit Site Tree. It is basically like uh, the heart of the whole page. Um, in the demo, we have changed the content structure via, uh, via drag and drop. And one important note here, maybe some of you already noticed the change uh, this changes the complete URL structure of your site as well. So it is possible for the user to uh, change routes via drag and drop. <coughs> and interesting for developers here, um, the complete site tree is extendable. So um, you can easily add custom setting tabs with JavaScript. For example, the theme tab uh, Flo just showed um, with the, with, with the hero image in the demo. Uh, and every other uh, extension can add more tabs as well. Um, for example, on the screenshot you see the meter tab, which also uh, binds some more uh, <coughs> options to the node, or to a node, or to a page. Um, secondly, you can even uh, define new node types for every extension. Um, this means the user can mount a controller and uh, of your extension at any location of the site and again uh, uh, moves this controller mount point via drag and drop. Um, to work with these uh, dynamic URLs, PageKit uses an internal route syntax and this is also our second highlight today. <coughs> um, you can use this internal links everywhere in, um, in your content and they aut will automatically um, convert to the actual URL like it is defined in the site tree. And um, this keeps your content uh, readable and avoids content updates if the URL structure changes. And these dynamic routes can be inserted into the content with PageKit's link picker. It is shown here and it is similar to the image picker you have just seen in the demo. Um, we have this decided to uh, do a lot of meter configurations via annotations in PageKit. In page annotations um, provide additional information within a comment block. And for example, PageKit's controller provide route, um, access, and request parameter configuration via annotation. This leads to controllers which already include their complete configuration and makes adding of new uh, um, uh, new actions straightforward. So this slide shows an example hello action with configuration and um, the route should be at hello and some name. This is then the, param uh, the argument which uh, will be passed to the action and some access restrictions so not everybody is allowed to say hello to this function or to this action. 
Um, for advanced developers, PageKit has lots of annotations for its uh, ORM uh, system available as well. So you can define database columns, uh, relations between tables, and much more via notation. Yes, all right, and um, this is our uh, third point. PageKit's uh, whole extension and theme uh, management is based on Composer. Um, this, uh, yeah, I think all of you will know it, um, the popular PHP package manager. And this is great for developers because it allows shared dependencies between the core and other third-party packages and will even resolve uh, version conflicts between extensions and their dependencies if possible. Um, it is fully integrated into the user interface and as you can see here, um, Composer's command line output, which I think most of you will have seen before, is displayed uh, completely inside the browser in our backend area. This is a screenshot uh, taken from our marketplace. Yeah, next point, um, PatchCut has an event-driven architecture which provides a flexible way of uh, communicating between different parts of the system. All important parts uh, of the code uh, core trigger events uh, so that extensions can intercept page kits uh, behavior without interfering, interfering with uh, other extensions. And yeah, this architecture allows to modify functionality instead of overwriting it. Um, the abstract term of uh, an event-driven architecture becomes here in this simple example. Um, uh, yeah, any, any part of the code can listen to events and they're triggered by other, uh, other parts of the code. So on this slide you see how a callback function is uh, registered onto the view layout event, which is triggered every time a template is rendered. And when this, uh, this callback is executed, the view renderer is directly passed into the callback function. And this code snippet will add some custom style sheets to the renderer. Um, we built the complete backend area up an area with Vue.js. Um, Vue.js is a JavaScript framework for building interactive web interfaces. For those uh, who never heard of it, it is similar to AngularJS, but more focused on the needs of PageKit and much, much, much smaller. Um, Vue.js offers things like decoupled and reusable JavaScript components, data reactivity, data bindings, and so on. Um, all of this made it uh, easy for us to create PageKit's admin interface. Um, so, but uh, why is this interesting for you as developers? Um, yeah, uh, of course, because every developer can use it to create perfectly integrated interfaces for uh, his or her extension in short time. So. Um, to support this, we developed lots of Vue.js components which make it easy to interact with PageKit. For example, PageKit's whole translation system can be used within Vue.js components and or, or Vue resource which make it, makes it very easy to um, talk to PageKit's API, to exchange, exchange data or perform actions. And yes, and by the way, this is our, our own contribution back to the Vue.js community and it is already used in, other, in some other projects. <coughs> and also we have created many UI components and several other helpers in Vue.js. Some of them are listed here. But the next point, modules. Um, in PageKit everything is a module, be it a theme, extension or any part of the core. A module uh, is defined by just one file and the rest is up to the, de uh, to the developer. This is cool because uh, it can be a tiny unit with just a name and a block of code or a fully, uh, full, full, uh, full extension with, uh, where the module just serves as an entry point. 
So for example, our block extension is a quite big module. And you can uh, add and remove modules uh, if you, uh, you can add modules if you need them or remove them, remove them if you don't need them. So um, this is a, um, is a module definition in its simplest form. It's just the name, the unique name, and the main function, which, uh, which is the entry point for the code again. Many other co keys are available here, as I already have noticed. For example, you can add event listeners here, registering routes, or interesting for themes, define module and menu positions, and so on. Yes, uh, being developers ourselves, ourselves, we develop tools making our lives easier. First, the developer toolbar, which is visible in the browser and lists, for example, all registered routes and triggers events, uh, and triggered event, events for this, uh, for this request, for the, or for the last request. One nice uh, feature here, you can jump from the debug bar directly to the line of code in your favorite IDE. <coughs> where, for example, an event was triggered. PageCat also has command line tools which, which can uh, install packages, or extensions, pass translation strings from your extension, clear the cache, or even install PageCat itself. Um, yes, this is a screenshot from our developer, from, from our toolbar, with some routes listed, which are currently re registered at, the, at this system. Um, and yes, this is, this is the event overview of trigger events. <coughs> um, and the last thing we want to highlight in is the marketplace, which is completely integrated into the user interface. And therefore, I will hand over again to Flo. Thanks. Yeah, uh, the marketplace is cool both for users because they can install packages right from their patch kit installation. Um, but also for developers, because they are able to uh, upload and release something which is available immediately in a lot of um, PageKit installations where people just can just click and install it while Composer is running in the background without the user noticing. So that's pretty cool. Um, the marketplace already has a few extensions and themes in it, um, currently all three extensions. Um, we just picked out a few today just to give you an impression of um, what has already been built. The analytics dashboard is something we've actually built ourselves. You can connect your Google Analytics account and have all your analytics available in your dashboard. Um, the form builder is something um, that someone from the community has created. So just you have a bunch of form types available, form field types available to create your own forms for your site. Um, another uh, yeah, community created extension is the user profile, which adds uh, more user fields to the user system that is built in into PageKit. <laughs> Pretty cool. Um, and you've seen that um, by default PageKit has this Markdown and uh, HTML editor, uh, but you could also decide to install TinyMCE and replace this editor. And we wouldn't be uTheme if we <laughs> wouldn't also build themes. So there's a bunch of uh, free themes available to get people started. Uh, the default theme that we've already seen um, when you install the, um, the system, and there are others available. And next week, I think we'll release four four themes um, to the marketplace. So there's a bunch of stuff to get started for people. And also, all future youth theme products um, will be available uh, for PageKit alongside the systems which they are already available for. Um, so a quick look ahead, which um, things that are coming in the future. Um, we've highlighted taxonomies because uh, actually someone from the um, community on GitHub has implemented it. It's currently an open pull request, which we are currently reviewing. So it's, it's cool that we have um, both discussions and contributions on GitHub. Um, and sometimes we take the inspiration from the discussions. For example, the site tree uh, was inspired by a dis discussion on uh, GitHub, which we then built ourselves. The taxonomy is now something that someone from the com community is contributing, so um, that's really cool. So we've shown you 10 things, 10 might be lots of quick overview of what we've had today. Um, we've had a look at the site tree. Um, I think we've had many looks at the site tree. <laughs> um, and we've talked about the internal route syntax, uh, annotations um, that you can use for 
configuration, which we find uh, quite handy because the configuration is right where we think it belongs. Um, yeah, we've seen the composer integration without the user noticing um, PageKit's event-driven architecture, Vue.js and the components that uh, we've built for it. Um, the module um, pattern that we are using, some developer tools and the marketplace. So uh, we hope that you could take something out for your own projects in the future. If you want to give it a try, just um, head to pagegood.com. Um, uh, we also have some screencasts available if you like videos. Um, if someone of you is coming to Hamburg anytime soon, we'll have our first meetup, I think, in the first week of June. So if that's interesting, um, have a look at that. And that's it just in time, I think. So thanks for being here, all of you. Are there any questions or are you yeah. hungry for coffee? <laughs> 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 Feel free to approach us later if there's more. <laughs>